Thanks, Anthony. That's beautiful. That's a beautiful carol. Thank you. So, whoever you are and wherever you may be on your own life spiritual journey, you are welcome here at the Sunderland Congregational Church. You're part of the United Church of Christ. And today is the second Sunday of Advent, and that means that we will be lighting the candle of peace. And so as Steve and Elaine come forward to lead us in that, it is in your bulletin. We do have a part as the congregation. Uh, but let us make sure that we offer those prayers with as much sincerity as we can muster. We need those prayers for peace in our world today. So the lighting of the second Advent candle. In days when God's people longed for peace, Isaiah declared, Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem, and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. We who gather today also seek comfort and peace, yet we are unsatisfied with ideas of peace that tell us to keep quiet and go with the flow. We long for real peace, true peace, just peace. We wait as a people who yearn for peace that bears the fruit of community, equity, and flourishing for all. We light these candles as signs of God's shocking hope and just peace. May they be beacons calling us to repent and to live the good news of Jesus Christ as we wait and watch and labor for the day when all people can gather together and to worship and glorify God. Amen. Thank you, Steve and Elaine. And as that candle burns in front of us throughout this service, I, I do ask that you keep in your prayers, uh, prayers for world peace, which are so desperately needed. It is now time for our opening hymn and candle lighting. Red hymn number 110, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. <laughs> Thank you. 
We can now turn to our bulletins for the call to worship. The day of Christ's birth is approaching. Let us lift our voices and share in the earth's celebration of the coming Messiah. We are Jesus' birth with Comfort, comfort my people, says our God. Speak tenderly to those who are suffering and encourage those who are persecuted. We will do our part to prepare the way for coming Savior. We look forward to the new creation of the earth God will gather us in gentle, caring arms. We will be held close to the divine. We will be comforted by God's pure love. And now coming together as this congregation in person, those joining us via Zoom and later through FCAT, our unison prayer. Righteous and holy Savior, your glory is revealed to us day by day as valleys of despair are lifted up and the mountainous problems are leveled. In your presence, we see more than our immediate situation. We catch a glimpse of your eternal purpose. So come among us now and speak your word of peace. Feed us with your truth in order to strengthen and equip us to work tirelessly for peace on earth among all God's people. Amen. Verses 1 through 11, found on page 581 in your Pew Bible. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem. Herald of good tidings, lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms, and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother sheep. Thank you. If our young people would like to come forward, or do you want to stay in the in the pews? All right. So I always I've mentioned this a bunch of times, but I uh, my Sundays are usually uh, the newspaper, the, and it's actually a paper. Loop. Oh, see, that'll be in the newspaper soon. All right. So um, I go home and I read my newspaper, um, and 
The paper newspaper used to be the only newspaper, you know, before screens and all that and 24-7. And so you used to get your news through here. And I don't know about up here in Sunderland, uh, but when I was growing up in Westfield, we had like a morning paper. I think it was the, uh, the morning union and the afternoon was the Republican. Did you guys have two papers up here or just the one? Yeah, no, we had two. You had two? Yeah. So every day, seven days a week, the, the paper newspaper would come and you could read the news because there wasn't like a 24-7 news channel and it wasn't ever always on your screen. But when you picked up the newspaper, most all the time, it's not good news. It's usually the bad news that makes the newspaper. And so you read the bad news in the newspaper, but today in the gospel, a little bit later in the service, we're going to hear about the good news. And so we have four Gospels, four different stories about Jesus, and they are different. Each one tells a little bit of a different story about Jesus. So there's Matthew, and there's Mark, and there's Luke, and there's John. And even though Matthew is the first one that you, like as soon as you turn to the New Testament, Matthew is right there, the oldest one is Mark's Gospel. And Mark is what we're gonna read, chapter one, verse one, and he's gonna talk about the Gospel. And all Gospel means is good news. And the good news is Jesus Christ. And so during Advent, I don't, I don't want to put you on the spot, but do you happen to remember what that first candle was last Sunday? Hope. And this one was peace. And so we're starting to get ready to light that Christ candle on Christmas Eve. We start with hope. We're talking about peace. Eventually we'll get to joy. And then we're going to get to love. And all of these are the ways that we prepare for the good news that Jesus is coming to us. And so the world is full of bad news, okay? But the good news is that we are here and we offer our prayers for peace, we offer our prayers for hope and love and joy, and that's how we wanna try and fight all the bad news that makes the newspaper, by trying to pray that through us, God can make for good news in the world, okay? So that's probably one of the, the best gifts of all of Christmas, the coming of Jesus, that we have this hope for peace in the world. Okay, so um, you can do whatever you like for Sunday school. There's our Sunday school teacher, Jen Field. And it's up to you guys what you'd like to do. All right. And today's anthem is put peace into each other's hands.
Thank you, choir. That was beautiful. And perfect for Peace Sunday. Thank you for picking that. It is now our chance to share our joys, our celebrations, and our concerns. And let us continue to offer prayers for Ukraine and also for those affected by the war between Israel and Hamas. We also continue to pray for our nations. We face the reality of persistent and institutional racism. And also this past week, I couldn't believe this when I saw it in the paper, it was the 80th mass shooting at a school. Um, and this one took place in Las Vegas at the University of Nevada there. And we pray for the victims, we pray for those who are traumatized, and we pray for real solutions to gun violence in our country. Also prayers um, I'd like to offer for friends of mine, Richard and Joseph, and one who is battling a severe blood disorder, that they may all enjoy quick and full recoveries. Before we hit the yellow sheet, does anybody have any joys or celebrations? <laughs> you want the mic? Don't they won't hear you at home. Okay. I just want to share the joy that they just threw you my wedding anniversary. 52 years. All right. Congratulations, guys. 52 years. That's amazing. Um, any other? Yes. Um, I just had a baby, Lily, she and passed me on. Oh my gosh, I didn't hear. Oh, congratulations. All right. Well, that's wonderful news. And what was the name? Lily. Lily. Beautiful. Okay, congratulations. Yes. Um, today is the 75th anniversary of the signing of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights that Eleanor Roosevelt um, coordinated with the United Nations. So, um, Very, and so appropriate on today's Sunday. Thank you very much for sharing. Yes? Um, I have a prayer request. Um, I'm asking for prayers for my colleague's grandson. He's five weeks old. He's had RSV and has been in and out of the hospital all week. And he's such a tiny little thing. And it's been very hard for the family. So please be in their prayers. Absolutely. Any other joys, celebrations, concerns? Um, so I haven't heard anything, but I know Kathy R. Uh, traveled down south to see her sister who is in hospice and um, is preparing to make the transition to the other side. So um, let's keep Kathy in our prayers. It's got to be a tough time for her uh, to deal with that with her sister. So she's down south. Um, any other prayers before we go to the yellow sheet? Okay, let us offer the prayers for Alan, Alice, Anne, Antonia, and family. Art, Bill, Bonnie, Brenda, Cheryl, Cindy, Denise, Frank, Grayson, Heather, Jeff, John, 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 Kathy, Lauren, Leslie, Lynn, Marcia, Mary Jane, Michelle, Mike, Pauline, Sandra, Steve, Stephen, Thelma, Virginia and Richard, Wink, victims of violence and natural disasters anywhere in the world, and we pray for peace on earth. And at this time, may we turn inward for just a few moments to offer those prayers to God that we choose not to say out loud, and 
um, amidst whatever you're praying, may we also offer a prayer for peace. God of good news, who sent John the Baptist as a messenger to the people of his day, and God who still speaks to us today in numerous words and deeds, open us now to receive what we most need today, so that we may serve as a vital resource to help in the work of further establishing your reign of peace here on earth. We also ask that you hear the prayers that we share with you today at worship, whether said out loud or silently, and that you answer them as you alone know best. And these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us now share in the prayer that Jesus gave to all of us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. One way in which we can prepare for Christ's appearance is to support the church's mission in our community and also beyond. Our church's program share Christ's gospel, which is the very good news of God, and our outreach provides comfort and help to those in need, which is how we live into the good news. And our goals are nothing less than the newness of life for all of God's people. May our gifts reflect God's generosity to each and every one of us. And therefore, may our contributions be as generous as our faith expects, but also as our conditions in life allow. And donations will be accepted at this time, but if you are joining us either via Zoom or FCAT, uh, donations may also be mailed here to the congregation. However you choose to support us, it is appreciated. Accept, O oh Lord, these offerings now to be placed here in your sanctuary as a symbol of our love for you and for all others. 
Today we've already heard the message of Isaiah about a captive people, and God still speaks to them, comfort, comfort my people. They must have seemed lost and almost forgotten, and yet God never forgot them and offers them comfort. The gospel is John the Baptist out in the wilderness. All the power, all the, all the people of importance are up in Jerusalem. He's out in the wilderness, and those people also may have felt forgotten and abandoned. But God was always there. And in our world, sometimes with so much war, so much violence, so much destruction, our message of peace may also sound like we are forgotten with those prayers. But we are here, just like Isaiah, just like John, just like the Christian church today. We are always here because God is always willing to work with us and to offer us the gift of hope and the gift of peace. So thank you for continuing to support the work of this church as we keep that gospel message of life alive. May God bless you, and may God bless these gifts to his purposes, we pray. Amen. Our reflecting hymn today is from Red Hymnal number 107, Let All Mortal Flesh Keep Silence. Thank you. Today's gospel is taken from Mark chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord and make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to John and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now when John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey, 
He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. So I was making a, a pastoral visit, and I think I've got this story straight from the one that I was talking to. They had gone to uh, the doctor's office uh, for a regular exam or something like that, and they, the, the person who was the, the medical person, I don't know if it was a doctor, a phlebotomist, a nurse, I don't know, but they asked which was the usual finger where they did the, uh, the prick to get the, uh, the blood test. And so the person showed them the finger that was asked for. And so they held up the middle finger to show them that was what you asked for. This is the one that gets pricked to test the blood. And it wasn't the proverbial middle finger. It was simply the finger that gets pricked for the blood taking. Well, the medical professional, I don't know who that person was, again, doctor, phlebotomist, nurse, I don't know, uh, but became very angry (laughs) with that. There was no insult intended, um, but they took it and they became angry about the middle finger. And, you know, the thing is, is I know people in the medical profession today, they're just stretched in too many different directions. Uh, Maybe the, the person before this person, maybe in the previous room, maybe the previous appointment, maybe it was just plain rude. And so that got carried over in the medical person to, you know, the person I was talking to. Or, you know, maybe, like I said, you know, they're, they're drawn in so many different directions and maybe they finally reach the breaking point. They want to take care of the people that they're supposed to take care of, but there's just so many things that they have to do that they don't feel they can do it right and they just have more and more responsibilities to put on top of them. And so that anger starts to build up and it came out with that person that I was talking to. Or maybe, you know, somebody just had to call in. Maybe they couldn't come into their shift for one reason or another. And now on top of all the responsibilities that you have, you also have to make calls home to figure out, you know, who's going to take care of so-and-so, who's going to make dinner, who's going to do this or whatever. And so on top of everything else you got professionally, you got all this stuff at home. And so wherever that comes from, it's carried and it comes out when that question is asked, which finger is usually pricked. And they get the finger and they erupt in anger. So we carry a lot of anger. So just use that as just like an example, but we carry a lot of anger in our lives. And so the world is an angry place that we carry a lot of anger in our lives. You know, I I mentioned to the the kids that, you know, my Sunday afternoon is usually reading the paper. Um, Today I'm gonna go see Scott Goodell uh, sing with whatever, do you remember the name of the group? The, um, he's going to be up in, at the Greenfield High School at 2 o'clock. Um, but, you know, maybe hearing some Christmas music instead of reading the Boston Globe, maybe that'll kind of lessen, you know, the anger just a little bit. But I read that paper and I hear the news and sometimes it just gets so bad, I got to pull back. I can't, I can't read anymore. I can't listen anymore because our world is just mean. There's so much violence in the world. There's so much anger in the world. There's so much harassment in the world. There's so many wars in the world that there's that anger that always seems to be there. And so it can kind of infiltrate. It'll kind of, it'll kind of settle inside. It kind of wears you down. And that constant pressure, maybe it's like that medical professional that at some point, without real provocation, because this was not a provocation, which finger did they prick? But sometimes it doesn't take two to fight. Sometimes it just takes one when you're primed with all that anger, and it will find a way out. So Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount, this is real early in his ministry, and he's, try, he's not trying. He is setting himself distinct from everything that has come before him in the tradition. And so in the Sermon on the Mount, he's giving all these examples of this is what it was, and then he says, but I say unto you. Now who is Jesus that he has the audacity to say, but I say unto you. Remember, he's, he's left Galilee. He's come to be with John the Baptist, who we just heard about. He leaves John the Baptist because that's not answering all of his questions. He goes deeper into the desert. Something amazing happens out there. He comes back, and now this carpenter is telling all the people of his day, I have a thousand-year tradition. We believe that it comes down from Mount Sinai with Moses on tablets of God that were inscribed by God, and that is what was. But I say to you, who is Jesus, this carpenter from Nazareth, to say after a thousand and years, but I say to you. But that's where faith comes in. 
We have to trust that this Jesus is a lot more than a carpenter. And that's where you get these wonderful stories about Christmas. Where did this Jesus come from? This is not some ordinary guy saying, I say to you. If Randy Calvin says, I say to you, take it with a grain of salt. When Jesus says, but I say to you, maybe pay a little bit more attention. And so Jesus says, you know, in the old tradition, the thousand years of tradition, the, the, the tradition is if you do something in anger and you act upon it, you hurt someone, you kill someone, then you have to pay a moral consequence for that. And that makes sense. That's how you go to jail. If you can be proved that you did something to harm someone, kill someone, you go to jail. But if I have feelings inside that I can't stand that person, but I don't do anything about it, I don't go to jail, and I shouldn't even be punished because I haven't done anything. But Jesus says, if I have that anger inside that says, I can't stand that person, then that anger, says Jesus, is something to be morally conscious of. And I think psychologists may have a little bit of a problem with that, you know, this idea of this anger deep inside and, and passing moral judgment on it. But I think what Jesus is warning us about is like that medical professional with the pricked finger. You know, it, it's there, and if we allow it to stay there and to simmer and to brew, it will find a way out. And Jesus is trying to tell us, don't let it sit there. Don't let it sit there and stew. Don't let it somehow, with the least kind of provocation, erupt. You know, in our world, we've had national politicians wanting to start fights in the well of our Capitol building because violence is so prevalent. We have people who are on the internet or even in person who will harass somebody just because they're different or believe differently, and sometimes it even erupts into violence. I just saw this too. At the end of October, the Public Religion Research Institute and the Brookings Institute, they released a poll showing a steady increase in the percentage of Americans who agree with this statement. American patriots may have to resort to violence in order to save our country. The number of people who believe in violence is increasing. It's increasing everywhere, all the time, this increasing violence. And, it, and it's simmering, and it's sitting there. And we have to take this all in. There's nowhere to hide from it. It's everywhere. And so Jesus is giving us this lesson about don't let that anger simmer, because it will find a way out, and then this peace will be torn asunder. And so when you have Isaiah out there in Babylonian captivity, saying, comfort, comfort my people, to people three generations exiled, who may have thought God forgot them, you know, comfort, comfort my people. And then the, he says those words about that voice of the one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Christians, ever since there have been Christians, have applied that to John the Baptist. And we've applied what John the Baptist said to the coming of Jesus. And so when Jesus comes to bring us peace in the world, out there in the wilderness, forgotten by just about everybody, when he is out there preaching that message to prepare the way of the Lord, we apply that to the coming in the Bethlehem manger. You know, there is no powerful God with a sword that comes down and forces peace upon us, because then that's violence just assisting violence. Instead, you've got God coming down in the absolute peace and humbleness of a child. And that child will never, ever raise a word in anger against anyone. He will never raise the sword because his example, his whole lived example, is that we have to change what's inside of us if we're going to change what's on the outside of us. So in a world that is so filled with violence, we can't just wait for God to force us to be peaceful. We have how God revealed how we can be peaceful. And I think in our heads we understand that that is hard but look at the absurdity of how many wars we've had over the centuries and the millennia, how many killings there is, how much harassment there is, how much anger there is. Is that really so much more absurd than what we are putting ourselves through now? And so that whole idea of preparing through hope and peace for the coming of that child, may it change us on the inside so that we are not such a violent people on the outside. And we pray for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Our hymn of closing today is from Red Hymnal number 131, Lo, How a Rose Air Blooming.
thank you for coming out and worshiping with us today on this Advent Sunday of Peace. I do hope you'll come back next week as we light that candle, the third one, the candle of joy. Uh, that's why it's just a little bit lighter in uh, color from the dark purple, because even as we anticipate the coming of Jesus, the joy of the season just can't wait until Christmas, and it sneaks out with next Sunday's candle of joy. So I do hope that you'll see, we'll see you next Sunday. I hope you have a peaceful week in between. Let us now share in our benediction response as we part and go our separate ways. Announce the good news of Jesus Christ. Prepare the way for Jesus' witness to be heard. Let us lead lives of holiness, enjoying the blessings that God sends into the world in the coming of that special holy child. This Advent season, let us turn our hearts and our minds to God and the amazing revelation lived in Jesus. May we imitate the life of peace that he lived so that the world may be saved by what we do and what we don't do. So let us now go forth to love and serve the Lord in all we do among all whom we may meet. Amen. Amen.